Hello and welcome to the shop. I have a very good friend. He lives in Dallas. We work for the same company and he has helped me out in so many ways and I want to say thank you. A while back he learned that I turn pins and he saw one of my pins and he requested a bolt action pin with the Second Amendment on it. Now I didn't really have one in stock and I really wasn't sure where to source one. When I went to the show, the Mid-Ohio Valley Pin Turners Gathering, my good buddy Mike DeLalter was making Second Amendment blanks. This is a, a label cast Alumalite blank. So this should turn like a dream. In the shop, I happen to have a 3 8 inch, now it's gonna be hard to see because of all the, uh, the packing, but this is a 3 8 inch bolt action gunmetal kit. This is gonna look incredible with this blank. So today, we're gonna to turn this blank for my good friend, Adolph Gonzalez. I'm getting ready to chuck this blank up but I wanted to show you very quickly the turn between center bushings I'll be using. Notice they've got a nice 60 degree cut in them. They fit perfectly on the dead center in the headstock or the live center in the tailstock. But the other cool feature about these is, look at that, they have a hole right down the center. You can slide these onto a standard mandrel. I like that because I can go from turning between centers straight to my mandrel for buffing. So these are really nice. I get these from the classic nib. And just like that, this blank is ready to be polished. I always love the way a Luma light turns, and Mike's blanks are so well done. Let's break out the micro mesh. I'm just going to run through the micro mesh pads in the proper order, build up a nice slurry behind the blank. And you can already start to see the blank shining up a little bit. Just after the first pad or two, you'll notice a big difference. Pause the uh, lathe and look. So you can already, it was kind of um, hazy because of the cuts, the uh, actual scratches from the cutting tool. And now I can literally read each line of text in the blank. So let's go ahead and run through the rest of the pads. And I think we're going to end up with a beautiful looking blank. This is pad number two. When I'm finished with this one, I think I'll go ahead and shut the camera off. Uh, finish out the micro mesh pads and then I'll just come back and show you what the blank looks like prior to taking it to the buffing wheel. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. You'll notice the scratches in the blank. Uh, I didn't like what I was seeing. There was a little hump right here. The blank wasn't nice and smooth all the way down the middle. And there's also just a tiny, just a tiny fingernail of a lip at the bushing. This end is perfect. Uh, so I went to some 120 grit sandpaper and I've been sanding on the blank. I've been dipping the sandpaper in water. I'm going to work my way down through 600 and then we'll go back through the micro mesh pads. Um, I could have gotten my tool and made a final cut and cleaned that up. But once again, I'll be honest with you, the blank I had on the lathe prior to this one, I was doing that and I came off the end of the blank and I literally caught my tool on the bushing, which pulled me back and I tore up about a half of an inch of a beautiful blank, and I really felt bad about that. So um, I'm a little I'm a little gun shy right now, pardon the pun, since this will be a bolt action pin, but I'm a little gun shy right now, and I'm gonna use some sandpaper to clean that up. So uh, a little, little out of the ordinary for me, but I think it's the right move uh, at this time. I will come back and show you this once I work through the paper and the pads. I want you to take a look at the surface of that blank. It looks absolutely amazing. Uh, even after running through five grits of sandpaper and putting a ton of surface scratches in there to be able to shape it up and clean this little lip up, I ran through those nine micro mesh pads and they took every scratch out of this blank. 
I have an incredible fit at both bushings. There's absolutely no lip. This was a brand new set of bushings, so they should be exactly the right diameter, and the fit is amazing. I'm going to go ahead and put a little Renaissance wax on this blank, and uh, then we'll buff it up on the buffing wheels. I've got my Renaissance wax, and I'm just going to basically apply it by hand. This is way more than I need for this blank, but just happened to be what came off of or out of the tub whenever I stuck my finger in there to get some. But we're just going to put it on with our finger. And I like using my finger. There's no abrasives. Like, oh, if, if you sand down or you polish down with the micro mesh, you're taking it down to 15,000 grit. If you use a piece of paper towel, that paper towel has a grit associated with it. And that grit could put scratches back in the surface of your blank. Your finger has no grit. So when you rub this polish into, or this wax, into the blank, you're not having any possibility of scratches whatsoever. And you can feel it. Like right now, I'm feeling a little bit of drag on my finger there. It's starting to work down here. There we go. Now the whole blank is waxed. And you just basically continue to move your finger. It might get a little bit warm, but it doesn't get hot. I'm running at about 1100, 1150 RPMs. And when you feel it sort of tug on your skin, you know that the wax is... You're finished waxing it, and it's time now to buff it. So let's get this off of here. We're going to put it on a mandrel, and then we're going to put our buffing wheels on here, and we're going to buff this blank up. I want to show you the beauty of these bushings. I'm going to loosen the tailstock up, take it off the lathe. Here's a standard mandrel. I'm just going to slide it right into the end of the mandrel. Put a couple of bushings on here to, to act as spacers. And now we're ready to go to our buffing wheels. And I've got a nice solid uh, handle to hold on to this as I buff it so it's not going to get yanked out of my hand and thrown across the shop. Love these bushings. Lathe still set at about 1150 RPMs. A little blue rosin. And we're ready to buff. And you can see the difference. Take a look from the front of the blank to the back of the blank, you can see how it's starting to shine up. Notice, notice the gloss. So we're just going to basically work the blank on the wheel. I like to change and I usually will polish from multiple directions. I don't know if it makes any difference, but it makes me feel better and you know, as long as you feel good about your work, that's really what matters. This blank is turning out beautiful. Now let's clean up any any dust, debris. Let's polish it up with a clean wheel. These are cotton wheels. They do a nice job. I probably need to replace the one on the left. Uh, not because it's dirty. The dirt comes from, from the uh, bushings. But uh, because it's probably caked so thick with the blue rosin that... Uh, I don't know, it probably works okay. All right, let's take a look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, look at that blank. There's not a flaw on it. Absolutely beautiful. Mike does incredible work with these blanks. I've brought my blank over to the assembly table. Still got the bushings on it. We'll go ahead and pull the bushing off the front. I've got a deburring tool here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run it a couple of times around the inside of the blank. And what that does is it chamfers the, the brass tube makes it a little easier for pressing the parts in. I'm gonna leave the bushing on the back of the blank. I've been doing this lately for my pins and it's really made a difference uh, in that I haven't had an issue with crushing the uh, back end of any of my blanks, especially with wood. If you have a softer wood uh, and you don't have it perfectly square, you can actually dent the back of the blank. So this has been a real, uh, a real blank saver for me. And I wanna point out something else. This is the first pin that I'm pressing with my lathe after I put feet on the bottom of the lathe. And I'll show you that in a minute. I'm gonna just tighten that up just a, just a hair. There we go. Take a look at that. We have got a beautiful fit right there at the top of the nib. I couldn't be happier. And the back of my pin or my blank is completely protected. Let me show you the bottom of this pin press. 
I put six rubber feet on it and they make a huge difference. I can tell that it will still slide, but it's got a lot more resistance. So I'm real happy about that. And, and you probably saw the video, but I did this because so many people commented on, you know, you should mount that pin press. Well, I like the versatility of being able to take it where I want and press where I want. And I don't want to, I don't want to have it stationary to me that that just doesn't really work in my shop. Next step. I'm getting ready to press the rear of the pin or the, the cap of the pin in, and I wanna show you something. Take a look at this. Notice your bolt goes forward and then it locks down, okay? How many rifles have you seen where the bolt points up? This should point down, and they don't tell you this in the instructions, but you can adjust this. And the way it works is you take a small Phillips head screwdriver, and let's see if you can see in there. Ah, my lighting's probably not that great, but there's a small Phillips screw inside of here. And you just loosen it up about one turn. And when you do that, you can then rotate the bolt on your pin. So you rotate it into place, and then you take the screwdriver, snug it back up, and take a look at that. Now that looks more like a rifle would look, where the bolt would go forward and lock down. Now you say, okay, that's great, but the clip's in the way. That's okay too. If you unthread the back about half a turn, yeah, maybe about a full turn, there we go. You can rotate the clip and there's a little notch on the other side of the blank and you can drop the clip into that little notch, tighten the primer back down, and now your clip is out of the way and your bolt looks more like a normal rifle. I'm ready to go ahead and remove the back bushing. I'm gonna run the deburring tool in the blank one more time, went the wrong way there. I need to apologize to you guys. I was working away, I finished assembling this pin, I went to hit the power button on the camera, and the camera was black. My battery was very low, I guess I didn't charge it before I started working, and it died on me, so you missed part of the assembly. I simply pressed the cap section into the blank and we have a gorgeous finished pin. I'd really like to thank you for watching this video. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a wonderful evening.